Governor Babajide Songulu of Lagos State has promised that the closed-circuit television footage obtained from the Lekki Toll Plaza will be handed over to the panel of inquiry looking into the shootings. Songulu made the promise while featuring on the Connect the World with Becky Anderson on CNN on Monday. While responding to questions on the shooting at the Lekki Toll Gate of Tuesday, October 20, the governor said no blood stains were seen at the Lekki Tollgate Plaza when it was inspected, but added that two persons had been reported dead. When asked if it was soldiers that perpetrated the act, the governor said footage showed that soldiers indeed carried out shootings. When asked if the soldiers would be brought to justice, Samulu said he would be, do everything within his power to ensure that those found culpable were punished. When probed further, the governor explained that he was not the commander-in-chief and all he could do was to forward his recommendations to the appropriate authorities. When I was joined by legal practitioner Wale Ogunwade, um, he joins us uh, from Ogun State. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we'll be joined also in a bit, hopefully, uh, by Inibehe F. Young, who is also a legal practitioner. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you and good morning, everyone. Good morning, morning to you. Um, let, let's start with the, the panel set up by the Lagos State Government on the heels of all that he has further revealed in that interview with the CNN. Um, how worried are you that these uh, panel uh, might just work and at the end of the day, recommendations may not be implemented? Yeah, several panels have been set up in this country and their recommendations have not been taken into consideration. Maybe because of political expediency or because the leadership played to the gallery. But this panel and this time around is a different kettle of fish. And please mark my word, it's not going to be business as usual. We have gotten to a stage in which everybody has to be serious. And if people are not serious, then definitely they will have themselves to play. Both those in government and those out of government knows that indeed is no more business as usual. This panel was set up as a result of public demand, not the wish and caprices of some persons in authority or in government. And to that extent, everyone awaits the outcome of this result. And by way of digression, if anything at all, I may not know of the other panels, but I know about the Lagos panel very well. At least I know the chairman of that panel have appeared before her several as a lawyer. And I know her to be a very thorough, very, very thorough woman, a jurist of that matter, and somebody who likes and who likes justice. Um, I followed her cases, apart from my own matter that I presented before her, that I appeared before her. Most of the matters she handles really don't go, even if they go to appeal, they, her ruling, her, her judgment are sustained to show the depth of person and the integrity she has. Another member of the panel that I can really vouch for is Ebu. He is a very good friend and of course a colleague, and of course we are together and, uh, in the Aluta world together. And I know that he too will pray for justice. And of course, we'll ensure that the uh, result let, let and the report of this panel quickly, um, is implemented sir. to the let, letter. Let, let me yeah. interject and say, uh, at this moment, uh, we're not looking at the credibility of the people that constitute the panel. We're looking at, you know, the validity of the recommendation that they will make at the end of the day as per implementation that will uh, please the people, especially with these uh, comments, these seemingly contradictory comments coming from the uh, chief security officer in the state who says, who says rather, that he cannot, um, all he can do is recommend. He cannot actually ensure that there is an implementation. Yeah, implementation in some areas, implement execution in some areas. Well, where, where I was going initially was that I wanted to leave foundation for, where, for, to, for your question. And the, the, the foundation is that these people that I'm talking about are people who knows their own and will not just be pushed around. And people like us who are watching from the sideline will not allow this report to be now swept under the carpet. So as for implementation, whatever the powers, whatever the support the government will need for it to be implemented, that's where we people will come in. 
And for your information, apart from individual activists, I know that the MBA itself was there, and even before this whole panel was set up, the MBA has really stated its position that is going to give legal support and services on pro bono basis, that's free services, to indigent members of the public who are in, have been victims. And of course, with, all, with this type of a, a, a backing behind the governor and the noise that will follow and attend to it, and I'm sure government will not want that after the, the government has, the panel has submitted his report, they will now say that there is nothing about it. Obviously, there will be action. That's where I'm going. All right. Um, let me um, bring in something that um, has of recent turned out to be a comedy skit on social media. Uh, the former governor of uh, Lagos State, Babatunde Fashola. Um, of course, numerous names have emerged, Sherlock Holmes, Inspector Gadget, all over social media. But I want to get your take on the uh, minister finding a camera um, at the toll gate. Uh, what is your take on all of that? And, and what's the relevance of that also? The, just, just to that's quite that. amusing Can, that okay. days, I guess, close to a week, eight days or seven days after the event in Lekki, the Fashola went there and saw that camera. Not somewhere hidden, as I can see from the footages, but somewhere quite open. And I can assure you that a day after, I was monitoring a sister station of yours, and even two stations went there, sent their correspondence there. The place, some people were busy, in fact, some scavengers were there scavenging, trying to check things, to pick things. In fact, one of them asked him, what was he doing? He said he's busy clearing the place. So I don't believe that those scavengers will not see that camera as seen by Fashola. So to me, there is something wrong somewhere. And that's why, again, I know that uh, the, the, the tribunal will do a thorough job. How did it get there? When they will ask, this place, when they go there, unfortunately, I'm sure they will go there, and I'm sure you members of the press too will be there. So is this something that was hidden? Was it placed there before Fashola got there? Was it deliberate? At, was, there must be something, again, that's another issue entirely. So how to me, this, it's um, part of what we are trying to say that we will unravel all this mystery, including how the soldiers got there, including who did what, and who ordered the lights to be off, because we know that throughout the period of those events, the lights were on. And so many questions that have to be answered. So just as I told you, the world is watching. And I don't think government and all those involved will be ready to bungle this. I will come back to you on the question of uh, um, um, Mr. Fashola finding a camera at the Lecky toll gate in a bit. But let's just introduce, um, welcome rather, our second guest on this uh, segment of The Breakfast, um, legal practitioner Iniba F. Young. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, um, I, we'll come to you in a bit, uh, Mr. Effian, but let, let's stay, let me stay with you, um, Mr. Gwadi. Uh, you, you, you talked about some of the questions that are coming up. A senior advocate of Nigeria has written and uh, in, in, in implied that the um, action of these governors who go to the inspect sites of damages like we saw in, at the Lekki toll gate might negatively impact the investigation of the panel and the end result. What do you say uh, to that? Will these uh, discoveries done by public officials at a scene that has already been cleaned up have any impact on the investigation? Really, we have it. It's an unfortunate thing that uh, it got to that level before now. What I was thinking was that immediately this event happened, Government will have cordoned up the whole place. There will not be any cleanup. You remember some few seconds ago, I said that I, I, I saw some scavengers, scaven busy scavenging the ruins of the place when uh, some few days after the event. So uh, the place is now like an open place, a public place. I have not been to Lekki for some time now after this event, so I wouldn't know maybe the place has even been open for vehicular use, for, for vehicles to be passing up and down. So there are so many things that are exhibits and uh, things that will be needed to prove one point or the other, to get to one fact or the other, that's already been taken off. 
So that fascia issue too, as far as I'm concerned, is one of it. So as far as I'm concerned, the, 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 the governors and the top uh, dignitaries that went there, it's a natural thing that they came on a sympathy visit to their colleague and they want to, uh, to visit the places to see the extent of damages. Yeah, so to me, I really find no, no problem there. My only problem was that, yeah, uh, the, the, one of the major evidence, because if it's, it is a camera, either I believe it's a private camera, even if it's a phone of one of the protesters that was found there, there are appropriate ways in which it will have been handled. But be that as it may, the event has happened. Like you say in law, one is wiser after the event. So I know that some people now are, wise, are wiser after the event. And I hope that indeed common sense will prevail. You see, we can't play politics and continue to play politics with the life of people. It's not good enough because human, be human life is sacrosanct. And that is provided for in Section 33 of our 1999 Constitution. There, everyone has a right to life. And anything that will abridge that right, truncate that life, should be avoided and should not be encouraged in any way at all, at all. We all need right. this evidence. Uh, let's bring in uh, maybe Mr. What will happen is now. Uh, Mr. Gwaldi, uh, we'll come back to you. Let's bring in Mr. F. Young now. Um, you, you, uh, I saw um, an FOI request you made to the Lagos state uh, government asking for um, a release of the CCTV uh, footage and other uh, documentation as regards uh, the Lekki situation and the protest in the country. Could you tell us a little more about this and the motivation uh, for you uh, to put out that FOI request? Well, well, I watch Governor Sangwolo, Sangwolo's interview on CNN, uh, where he claimed that the footage would be made available to the panel of inquiry. Now, I am happy he has made that commitment that the footage will be made available at the panel of inquiry. But my position is very simple. If I am appearing before the panel to make representations, either personally or on behalf of victims as a legal practitioner, I should be available evidence, documents, materials that are relevant, that are useful in establishing my case. It is similar to what we call a discovery in law, where before trial commences, the law allows a party to demand that it should be available documents in possession of the other party or for the other party to disclose documents that he has to aid his case. Now, I, as much as I have confidence, like, uh, Mr. Ogunade said, my learned friend said, as much as I have confidence in the membership of the panel, we cannot insulate the functions, the independence of the panel from the environment under which they operate, from the governments that set it up. It is important for us to look at it objectively. Now, Recall that when this incident happened, with what the governor now calls an incident, when this attack took place on the 20th of October, the Nigerian military disclaimed reports that the officials, the officers were at the Lake Toll Gate and that they had attacked officers. The governor has now publicly admitted that it was indeed military men who went there to attack protesters. We have also seen footages to that effect. So if the governor has admitted that the footage is available, the CCTV records are available, as a citizen, I have the right to request for it, not only to aid my participation in the work of the tribunal, of the panel, but to also give me clarity on what evidence is in position of the governor. The panel on its own cannot produce that evidence because that will amount to them descending into the arena of conflict. My understanding is that it is persons who have complaints, who have petitions, who have submitted memorandum that will appear before the panel and adduce evidence. So if I am going there to make a case, which I have the intention of doing, on the complicity of the 
military and other persons or institutions or authorities in the attack on protesters. I should be aware the CCTV footage which the governor has said he has in his possession. Right. Furthermore, Mr. I'm also saying that as at the time this panel was constituted, the governor told us, told the public, told the Russians, that the terms of reference, the jurisdiction of this panel would be to investigate SARS abuses in Lagos State. The governor has now said, as affirmed by the president, that the terms of reference of the panel has been enlarged, has been expanded to include investigation into what he calls the Lakey Tollgate incident. Nobody has seen the instrument setting up this panel, to my knowledge. Nobody has seen the terms of reference to that effect. So I am not being skeptical. I am just saying that it is inadvisable as a legal practitioner for me to begin to appear before for me to appear before a panel whose instruments of question I haven't seen. All right. Um, hold on now, a Mr. Mr. Ifeong, I, I want you to speak um, a little more on your um, expectations from the panel. Do, do, do you um, feel like the panel has... Um, all the necessary bits of evidence that will be relevant in unraveling the truth uh, to what happened last uh, week, Tuesday, on the 20th. Um, why I'm asking this is because in the past couple of days, we have seen that Loma has been there. Um, there has been no forensic um, investigation. The place wasn't cordoned off for investigation. Um, it has been swept clean. The governor has also mentioned that they didn't see any blood stains. And so these are statements almost, you know, pushing us in the direction that, you know, they might be assuming it's not a crime scene. So do you think that the panel of inquiry will have enough bits of evidence here and there, video footage, um, hospital records, eyewitness reports that will be relevant in tr um, totally unraveling the truth? about what happened on the 20th? As far as I am concerned, there is no sincerity on the part of the federal government to get to the root of this matter. I do not have iota of trust for this administration or for this regime, as it were. The facts are before us. This is a government that denied killing members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria. Do not forget that Governor Rufai constituted a similar panel, similar to what Sanwolo has done in Lagos, to probe the attack on the I IMN in, in Zaria, in Kaduna State. That commission of inquiry found that over 300 members of the Shires were killed, of the IMN were killed. Till today, no, no military man, no military commander has been held accountable, has been prosecuted, has been dismissed. Members of the, is, the IPO, in members of IPOP were also similarly slaughtered in one of the Saudi states. Amnesty International presented evidence. These things are documented. Again, nobody has been held accountable. Nobody has been convicted. They have seen, I can cite several examples. The point I am making is that nobody should be carried away because the panel has been set up. President Buhari has not hidden his unwillingness to hold the officers accountable. Samuel cannot do it. The governor cannot do it. The panel can sit, they can deliberate, they can make recommendations. The point I am making is that there is no political will on the part of this government to do what is right. All right. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna we will go just be deceiving ourselves if we pretend that because the panel has been set up, therefore the victims will deserve just, justice. Just, just Why do you need take... a panel? We have a commander in chief in a country. Mr. Ifyong, a... just a follow up to what you just said. If you, are, you have such extreme doubts that the government will go through with the recommendations made by this panel, how hopeful are you that your FOI request will be granted about unveiling what is the content of the CCTV cameras? Well, it is, the governor has publicly pledged, he has said so, that he is committed to a transparent investigation. So if the government has nothing to hide, if the governor has nothing to hide, the things I'm requesting for are very harmless. For example, the instruments I'm asking for. You said you declared a curfew, you revised the time to 9 p.m. This attack took place before 9 p.m. Bring the instruments. Let us see the instruments. Let us see the instrument of the curfew. If I am making representation at the panel, I should be able to exhibit that instrument to show that this was the time the coffee was supposed to take place. This was the time that the attack took place. 
every lawyer will understand what I'm saying. So if the governor is genuinely committed to transparency, honesty, and truth, he should not evade it in, in granting my FOI request. All right. so but I'm, I am not ruling out the to... possibility of going to court if after seven days that request is not granted. I'm, because... I'm going back to Mr. Agunade now. Um, apologies, uh, Mr. F. Young. Now, I, I want to, of course, your uh, co-speaker here has you know, shared his thoughts on um, his expectations from the panel and his expectations also from the federal government and their willingness to be entirely open and truthful with um, the panel's findings and, of course, take action. Um, but... Ms. Agunade, how do you think the citizens can continue to mount pressure on the government to ensure that truth is eventually unraveled? If we look back at what happened in Zaria, um, the findings of the panel of inquiry are out there in the open. There's been no action taken. Same thing with, with the you know, attack on the um, IPOB. How do you feel citizens can continue to put pressure on government at a time like this to ensure that it doesn't, you know, happen like, the, you know, the ones from the past? Yes. The difference between this one, I want to assure my brother, Inebe, that the difference between this issue and the previous ones he has mentioned is about the citizens' awareness. The citizens have woken up from their slumber. You see, of course, you know, in civil society, we see an attack on one is an attack on all. The people, those who have suffered injustice initially, people pretended as if it's not. And there's another cliche, which you agree with me, that if you say nothing and you do nothing, nothing will happen. Now, people have said something, and that's why things are happening. And where am I going? Uh, Buari was not interested in the lucky shootings. But because people started talking about it, he spoke, and people countered him and said, why would you do that? People's lives were, were destroyed. Damaged, properties were damaged, and so on. And you saw that he quickly came out with the rejoinder. And every day, Son Wolu and all the other governors too are put on, the, on their toes that for this one, there must be justice. And nothing short of justice is what the people expect. And you can be assured that I, I don't know where that confidence is coming from, but maybe because I'm involved in these things, I've been involved in the Aluta struggle for some time, and I know that never have we gotten it this far. This is the, what happened in the last few days is the child's play to when we are struggling against Babangida. I okay. think we may have lost him there. Um, Mr. Ifyong, are you, are you still with us? If, if you can also quickly respond, because you have been the one um, you're playing an active role now in ensuring that truth, uh, you know, is uh, um, revealed, you know, with this investigation. So, Mr. Ifeng, I also want to get your thoughts on how citizens can continue to put pressure on the government to ensure that, you know, these investigations uh, are carried out thoroughly. The first, the first thing we have to do is to ensure that the panel is given on fettered hand in total independence to operate. Which is why I re echo the sentiments expressed by Mr. Ebon Adegurua SM to the fact that the action of the minister who is now the producer of a Discovery Channel uh, is, was totally unwarranted. The lucky to get ought to be treated as a crime scene, ought to have been combed, ought to have been investigated by the should have been some forensics. As experts who were deployed to that site. So if we are not even watching the process through which the decision of the panel is arrived at, the recommendations may become controversial at the end of the day. I am hoping, I am hoping, I am hoping. I, I, I love the confidence of my, my, my learned friend. I love how, how he's confident that this is going to go off smooth. But history tells us to show cautious optimism. Let us see, for example, whether the military officials who are involved would be summoned, would be subpoenaed, whether they will appear before this panel to testify, whether the chief of army staff will be willing to give evidence or can be compelled to give evidence. Let us see who in the Lagos state government is going to be, because the Lagos state government is also standing trial, as far as I am concerned in this case. The role of the state government is not that of, you know, a party who is not being blamed. The governor has severally been accused. There have been allegations that have been leveled. 
Again, the, gov the same government that constituted this panel of inquiry. So let us see, really, the extent to which this panel will be allowed to go to investigate, the extent to which they will be able to come to in invite witnesses to summon people to testify. But eventually, eventually, if we do not have an independent investigation, if this panel is not allowed to function, if we continue to see the kind of dramatization that we are seeing, you have a panel that you have set up. Why are you still making prejudicial statements? You are indirectly telling us that the state government, the executive arm of government, has already formed an opinion on the matter. So I, I do not think that is appropriate. Since right. you have considered a panel, allow the panel to function. You should not be making a prejudicial statement as, as a governor. You should not be saying, people should not be saying, oh, there was no blood at the crime scene. Who went there? There are even allegations that people were killed and their corpses were taken away. How can we arrive at the truth? When All the right. government Both of you seem to be on uh, two sides. Why one is um, expressing cautious optimism, the other is just not sure uh, that there, is, there will be um, a positive outcome for the people. Uh, moving forward just a little um, away from the inquiry, we hear that the president is likely to speak on the shooting uh, today. His last statement um, didn't impress a lot of Nigerians much, even though his media aides came out to try and um, buffer it up, so to speak. With this possibility that the president will speak, what should we expect this time around? Will the uh, recommendation and the condemnation, including coming from the likes of Chimamanda Adichie, um, will impact the next speech from the president? Uh, the question is to yeah, you, you know, uh, Mr. Wadi. I, I, I told you some few seconds ago that before people kept quiet. We had a president that was not speaking. The other time he spoke, after much pressure, and his speech was not interesting, and people begin to bash him, people begin to knock him. And I'm surprised that, I'm not surprised really, that he's now, he wants to talk to us again. And I never knew this is what he wanted to do. I had no, I did not have this information when I told you earlier on that time has passed. We are no more in those era where people keep quiet when things happen. That people look at it that they, we are past the area of government does not commit any wrong. Now government commits wrong and it's not going to be said that you have committed the wrong and that wrong must be righted. And that's what has happened now. And you can be sure that the people have gotten their voice. And because the people have gotten their voice, and don't forget we are in a democracy. And the schoolboy will define democracy as a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. And if anything at all, the Constitution will operate, particularly section, 20, uh, section 12 of the Constitution, says that the welfare and the security of the people, that's what the government is about. So if government does not provide for the welfare and the security of the people, it will have itself to blame. And don't forget again that all Section 1C says that all authorities and offices in this country they are all subsumed, their powers are subsumed within the constitution. They swore to protect the constitution. So it's the people's voice that must matter. I appreciate my brother's sentiment, but you can be sure that by the grace of God, things will take a new turn. The only lesson from here, I guess one of the big takeaways that we take away from this discussion, particularly for security agencies that are watching or listening to this program, is that they should please, whenever a crime is committed, they should quickly go to the scene of the crime and cordon off the place. It does not matter how important that place is. Like this lucky thing, yes, is a major place, but then it should be cordoned. And of course, after being cordoned, then of course an alternative rule, no matter what, will be done. And quickly, they will take evidence, they will take the snapshot, take video and so on. Because people first shot that day, or whichever way, we saw bloodstained flags all over, except maybe they will tell us that it was the ground and the goods that they brought to the place to, to entertain themselves, that they now wrap the, uh, the, the blood or smear the blood, the, the Nigerian flag with it. All right. But we saw people, and of course, if two or three people are in hospital, then definitely that, that they are, they, there was blood spilled on the ground. So if some people now went there some few days ago, uh, some few days after, and said that there is no blood, then definitely that, uh, something is wrong somewhere. Okay. And we must correct that something that is wrong somewhere. Finally. I guess a lot of lessons have been learned from this Lucky Tollgate issue. That Thank you very much, Mr. Ogunade.
I'm, I'm going to go finally to uh, Inibe F. Young now. I, I want your final thoughts on all of this as quickly as possible. And also, tell me about your feelings with regards to the members of the panel, most especially the youth members of the panel, those who have been, uh, you know, picked out, you know, from the, well, I, or, uh, to be representatives of the NSAS uh, um, team. Um, what are your thoughts towards these persons? Um, and what are your final thoughts? Well, uh, I'll be very reserved in commenting on the youth representative in the panel because that itself has been a controversial issue. The youth have not been able to, you know, have a unanimous opinion on who should represent them. So how the two people were representative were eventually arrived at, I do not know. I do not have an idea. So I, I wish to ask that I should be excused from speaking further on that. Now, if the president decides to speak again about the Lekito, because I don't even think he will, I have seen tweets, I saw tweets yesterday to that effect. What I want to see is action. Let him start by sacking the chief of army staff. Why, why, when we have this hesitation towards holding people accountable, when we give given this impression that we are a lawless country, that we are a country where laws uh, you know, do, do not matter, if the president is truly committed to accountability, to truth and honesty, he should start by relieving the chief of army staff of his, of his position, bringing some other person. Because in a serious country, the head of the army ought to have resigned on his own. Since it has not been established, at least preliminary findings show, it was the army that went there to attack the protesters. Somebody has control over them. If the chief of army staff, if the commander in chief did not give the order, the chief of army staff should be held accountable. Because that means that the army has gone through. Thank you very much. If the president of the country, the commander in chief, did not give the instruction, only the president has control over the army. He can only delegate that to the chief of army staff and so on. If Buhari did not give order for the protesters to be to be attacked, let the chief of army staff be fired. Any right, other thing, as far as I'm concerned, is just window dressing. Inibe F. Young, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us, and uh, we we'll look forward to, of course, bringing you in when uh, there are more revelations from this investigation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you also to Wale Ogunade for sharing your time and your thoughts with us this morning. To God be the glory. Okay. Um, I, I was, I was going to say, you know, I'm, I'm also starting to feel that the um, camera found by Babatun de Fashola is, is a distraction. And this is why the Lagos State Governor earlier in the week had said that the cameras that were taken out were not CCTV cameras. They were cameras that were used to capture plate numbers and, you know, infrared cameras and stuff, and stuff like that. And that the CCTV cameras were still present, according to him. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure what the relevance is, you know, with the one that was found, you know. First of all, and another thing is, if you look very cl uh, cl um, closely at the, at the picture, the cover for the lens was still on, um, on the camera. So it's very, very likely that that camera didn't work, hasn't captured anything, is of no relevance. On the, on the flip side, a very unpopular position to take. Could it be that we're blowing this out of proportion? Very, Maybe very the emotion of the moment might have um, inspired some sort of, you know, being careful not to contaminate. I mean, that was his first time of being, not holding forth, but it could be that we're blowing this out of proportion because if we have a CCTV camera, it doesn't, it is irrelevant what he found um, Very, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. It's, yeah, it's irrelevant. So and and I, I also feel well, that... Maybe the Nigerians just needed a little bit of a distraction. I also feel, aside the cameras on the toll gate itself, there's a very big hotel right next to it. That hotel has CCTV cameras. There's so many ways to investigate this. There's, there's too much, you know, that you know, is at the hands of the panel of inquiry if they are really serious. And if they were serious, then that place shouldn't have been cleaned. There shouldn't be traffic. There should have been called. Yeah, I, I think that's the uh, takeaway from the conversation this morning. Um, one of them is um, this particular panel has a responsibility to make sure I mean, the government, rather, has a responsibility to make sure that the panel uh, revelations that will come at the end of the day is implemented and that it sticks 
they stick to the later of whatever recommendations that are made if they want to be taken seriously. That, that's uh, one of the takeaways. The other one you mentioned now is staying away from a crime scene. I mean, we all watch some of these uh, films, even though they are make-believe. You know that when there is a situation that we allege a crime has, has been, been committed, committed, there's every likelihood that the place will be contaminated if someone that is not part of the system enters that place. So that was the first mistake. Who authorized? We're asking for who authorized the shooting? Who authorized the cleaning of that place? Maybe without... the same people who, who didn't want to admit that it was a crime scene, who didn't want to admit that people had died. That's why it was that same energy that they used to clean it up, because at first they never admitted that any crime was committed. They simply, you know, made it seem like people were there beyond the curfew. They're not sure if the army showed up or not. You know, we're still thinking about it. You know, we'll find out who turned off the LED lights. And, you know, that's how it went. You know, next thing, the crime scene is contaminated. Ministers walking in, you know, you know, finding cameras. And, I, I, if not that, the, this whole thing has been shrouded in some sort of secrecy and, you know, um, half-truths or no-truths at all. I don't think that... Um, a freedom of um, information request is required because if the gov governor has acknowledged that there is a CCTV camera, what does it take while the panel is investigating? Open up the, put out the visuals. Let's see what actually transpired. They can still investigate. Why you release it so people see that there is a measure of transparency? I know a lot of persons will tell me, no, that's not the way it is done. But it, the, the trust deficit we keep talking about yes. is just increasing on a daily basis with the narrative that is and it might get worse. on the on the heels of what transpired at the Lekki Tolkien. It, it might get so, worse. Um, it, this government, not just um, Lagos state government, because he has said that, uh, well, there is a limit to the things that he can do, but the federal government, led by President Muhammad Buhari, has a huge responsibility to the people of this country to ensure that the findings of whatever panel this time that has been set up, because... Nigerians are exhausted from the being optimistic. So there must be a reinstating of some level of confidence with the recommendations that will come from this panel. One That's thing that I would sense. say to, to wrap this up is every time that I hear the Lagos State Governor say, oh, you know, I don't have any powers, you know, I'm only going to, you know, do the best that I can on the state level. And would, it, every time it just, every, you know, sounds to me like, don't blame me if we don't find anything. That's, that's exactly how it sounds, because he, say, he says it over and over and over. Um, and it every time sounds to me like, you know, just in case we don't find anything, just in case nobody's persecuted, don't blame me, it's not really my fault, it's, you know, beyond me. That's how it sounds. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.